Okay. Don't try this at home. That's like before and after on fail blog. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping with a couple of themes that are somewhat prevalent in our community, we have the worst kept secrets sometimes, the best kept worst kept secrets because it seems like everybody knows about it yet nobody said a word about it, but everybody's expecting it. And uh, so along with that and the items that have been released as freeware this weekend alone, anybody remembers Legend Industries? They uh, primarily made RAM cards, made all kinds of RAM cards, and lots of utilities for RAM cards that you could do all kinds of fun things for RAM cards. And one of the RAM cards they made might, might as well be looked back upon as the first flash drive of a sort. It was, called, it, uh, it was an 18K card, but in addition to being a language card, like every one of the other cards, you can stick it in the computer, write stuff to it, and then take it out of the computer and go put it in the other computer over there and the stuff stays on. So, based on, uh, on static RAM. And yeah, another thing about that is, of course you can understand, you, can, you know that the, uh, that means the underground community must have probably loved that. Because what else can you, what else does that mean? Write protect the RAM card. Stuff goodies in there, break into the monitor, get them back out. You can move chunks of operating system into there and then get them back out in the normal operating system, build your nice hybrid, and copy off your nice disk. A team of engineers to lock up that disk and a couple of 10 year olds in two hours, and it's up on the AE line. 16 people have downloaded it already. Well, maybe by tomorrow. <laughs> anyway, so Legend Industries has has uh, released all of their hardware in a freeware status, that being that meaning that uh, informational purposes, educational, etc., not for profit. The catch is, right now, we don't really have much of the stuff, and the uh, creators didn't really have much either on their own. He is looking for more stuff. Um, the first real piece we got from Sean this morning will be Legend S card manual. I do have some manuals already uh, done. Richard Jackson usually on Compsys uh, Apple II, provided a lot of materials already, and I'm working on getting some photos and whatnot. It will all be showing up on Lost Classic Project as it comes out. With that, it's kind of a dual trip here. I can 
save my own frames every 10 seconds with the same same webcam that saved the, the road trip on the way here. Get a little bit closer of a view of what's going on. And some of this I will might I might go quite fast because we only have so much time. The pictures will explain it all later, and there will be a video that will be on YouTube or such in the next couple weeks because it's going to take about a week to get out. So. Typical disk drive and put a disk in. Anybody heard that click? The disk isn't even in there now. It's right there. That drive is now engaged. It's not going to work. A lot of times people will then have the urge to pull that out, and if you pull it out, you ruin the head. So the best thing to do is just push them all the way in. Sometimes you'll put that in and it will prompt you to format it because it doesn't go in all the way, but it thinks it's in. How do we fix this? Turn off the computer first. <laughs> and disconnect it. Four screws on the bottom make believe there's four. I've only got two here. top of this, or I should say the bottom of this, is going to lift up by the cable. That comes away. It's also a nice place to put your stuff. Looking at the back, there's two cables back here. And those cables just come straight back and out. out of the way. That goes to the side. And then you have one screw. Take that away. or impact driver, when these don't come out, and if, if these haven't been taken apart before, one of the things I like to do with these is the proper fitting screwdriver is important on these disc drives because these screws are soft. Put it in there, just smack it, and then spin it to get it out. In, just push on the drive on the motor. Just push it right out. The cable will slide right out and stay right where it needs to be. So we're going to slide it back together. It's already waiting for you. Now, the plastic, the, I was going to say plastic metal piece. <laughs> <laughs> the metal piece on top is just a little aluminum shield that kind of just pops off. Put that aside. And disk drive and what's basically supposed to really happen is it's supposed to go in and drop down. Now, this one this one actually works quite well when it's not in the case. It's kind of unique. But it does exactly what it's supposed to except for the last bit. It doesn't. Best tools for this are small screwdrivers so you can find a set like this. The dollar store set from uh, Whatever dollar brand of dollar dollar store you get, Dollar Tree, Dollar whatever the heck is okay, but you not be able to quite reach in there with it. And let's see where my what are my balance here? I'm gonna take this apart. First thing you have to do is engage this. And the best way to figure out how that works is you can't see it. Put a disc in. You'll see what gets moved first. In this case, it's over here, so we want to actually drop that, drop that down. And on 
the sides, there's two springs. They come off at the bottom and they'll stay right where they're at. And the most sensitive part in here, I need to, to reiterate the drive head. Do not lift the drive head like this. The only place you want to pick it up is from the back. And once again, do not lift or mess with the drive head. I will bend one and I will show you how to fix it, or how it can be fixed, but I don't think, I think most people will not be able to fix it. Okay, the drive head is held, when, you, when the drive is open, there's a black lever here that lifts it up. You need to take that out. And that is this piece right here. It comes out by lifting up the middle and dragging it backwards. And now it's free from the drive. Now the head is, is sitting in there, not connected to anything. Now you can take this piece out. Just lifts up from one side, put that aside. The head is connected to the motherboard by two ribbon cables. They're stuck in little slots, just pull them out. And now down inside here is two Phillips screws next to a chrome rail. Those two Phillips screws come out. So these screwdrivers that have the rotating back end are really handy for this kind of thing. out with the little rod that it's the rail that it's attached to and this one has a little cup on the end some a lot of them don't it's there just leave it there you generally don't have to do anything with this there's nothing wrong with it just get it out of your way get the two screws out put them aside Down here, the bottom part of this is held on with compression rings. They come off with pillows. They're kind of like plastic. There's grease on them. What we're going to basically be doing is getting all this grease out of here. The eject motor held down with two other screws. This one, do not want to be careful with it. Just handle it gently because you don't want to tweak it, bend it, or anything else. When you're done with this, it needs to sit flat on the table. When you touch it, it's got four ended, it's got four raised spots on it that it uses to slide on. If you touch it on the edges, it should grab a little bit, but if you touch it right in here, this should stay relatively flat on the surface tells you you have not warped it. And most of the time that is all you have to do to take, it's all you have to take apart. Sometimes you may want to take the, the uh, stepper motor off, in which case it's only got two more screws on it. And again, that's also plugged in the same way. There you go. <laughs> and Dr. Karatsouris, I'm here to help you. 
the same wrong number. That's been Why? bugging you all day. Yeah. Uh, okay. So if you have to take the stem rotor off, it would be because it's you want to get an awful lot of extra gook out of here that, that someone may have put in meaning well and causing no good, no good outcome. As you can see, they put grease and whatnot in here. My favorite uh, method of getting of cleaning is simple silicone spray, paper towels, and all that gunk comes out of there. Also, alcohol works. I just forgot to request it. We got when we got to the car, so we'll just have to roll with this. If this were an automobile and you were going to paint it, you wouldn't be getting this stuff within a mile. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't use the wrong relays either. Yeah. So all of this grease, you can see uh, the line right there that's going to disappear here. This is the easier part to clean because it's all out in the open. Incidentally, even more of this does come apart, but this is all you need to take apart. All of this metal comes off again. You just need to get all the parts to slide between each other. Right? Correct. Correct. Sure. Underneath this is a giant is a pretty strong magnet. I always used to be a little smart aleck when they used to say magnets and discs and I said, well, if it's so bad for them, how come there's a giant one inside the disc drive? Yeah. We know why. <laughs> or the, the teacher used to say, don't put them on top. Okay, but if putting it on top is bad, it must be horrible to put it inside. <laughs> 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 no, that's for the cat to go on top. No. Okay. Ventilation. And block the ventilation and drop in all the little yes. hair. All right, so that's done. That's cleaned off. That aside, pieces all over the place here. Let's have the front part now. This one. center roll paper towels and you can tell because they shed everywhere. You're cleaning bugs off the car, who cares? Okay, the way I recommend you do this is flat on the table because if you resist it, if you pick it up, you're probably going to bend it. Whatever you don't care about messing up. Whatever, whatever the war department isn't going to yell at you for making a mess of it. <laughs> now the bottom of this usually has a lot of caked up stuff on it and it's harder. This is where you're gonna get you want to resist the urge of pushing on it because it's quite possibly can screw it up. So the best way not to push on it is to work on small areas and only hold on to a small part. This is not getting put back inside of a, of a uh, harsh environment. It's not going inside of a computer. Even if it were going inside of a computer, they, set, they usually you pull them out now and they've got a big condom around them, as I call it, a big plastic thing with foam rubber in the holes to keep the, the uh, path of least resistance from the fan of going all the air through the drive so that it takes all the contents of your room in there. This doesn't need to have all this, all this grease on here. It's not working in such a high, ma high <coughs> manner that it needs to have all this. When we're done, the coating that's left over is going to last just as long as this disk drive did, if not longer. Oh, 
doesn't dry out as, and it doesn't really collect dust and debris that come in. And three and a half inch discs don't tend to have, don't tend to carry in lots of, lots of foreign matter with them. So I've got all of that off of there now. And still flat. I'm not exactly being gentle with this stuff. You can see it's not, nothing's gonna break. Barely, has, it's got, doesn't take much to get it to move now. Of course, I don't have the washer on there yet, but that's, that's what you want. This is the hardest part to deal with. It's got several spots in it that are hidden away. Along these four edges, there are very rudimentary sleeve bearings that when this slides forward, are some surfaces in here that, that will actually roll down and drop. And that's <coughs> between the springs and the rolling bearings is what makes this whole thing work. These get gunked up first. When you put a disc in, it doesn't slide as fast. That's where the problems start to happen. Another thing that helps is these Q-tips, and if you have a problem, you can also get the stuff out of there with it. Just a, where they really come in handy will be on here. You have to get all of this. What also works real nice if you have a top of a 50 pack of CDRs and denatured alcohol, Put all the metal and denatured alcohol. And then as you're cleaning it, pull them out. So this rubbing alcohol works. Rubbing alcohol works, but you want very bright, very very clean, fresh, new, hasn't been sitting underneath there forever and open twenty thousand times because you've got more water than alcohol. And don't do that on a uh, as we discovered putting trying to clean clean memory cards. Don't do that on a summer day that's nice and humid. Q-tip end, when it's cut off, is nice to clean out the inside of this track, which also gets full of all kinds of stuff. The disc can't slide freely. It's not going to go down. See, that's got a nice spot on there. It didn't have nine lives, and the little mouse got it. But did, did it kill the mouse at least? It chewed. Oh, the mouse died. Good. <laughs> but it chewed off about an eighth of an inch of the top of the cart. Those stupid little rodents can eat an amazing amount of stuff. Yeah. Why it picked that cart, I don't know. The, the irony of that cart. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. And same rules for this for this top piece here. 
are, you don't want to bend, tweak this, and as you can see, this has moving parts on it. That's even more critical here. And this, whatever's on here is usually caked out very well. You barely see Resource Central on the screwdriver. Apples, if it's any, or it's pure white or pure yellow, it's apples. Okay. If it's any other mixture, and someone's been in there, regardless of what they say they have or have not. Okay. The roller bearings on this must turn. If it's any single one thing you do when you when you do this, these must turn. This one's stuck. So to do that, needle nose. I don't squeeze the heck out of it. Flintstone tires in here won't work. <laughs> you get replacement roller bearings. If you, you mess it up, you find out, just find another drive. These don't come off anyway. These are riveted and pressed in place like pen nuts. And they're kind of sort of turning now. This is where the alcohol comes in handy that we don't have, but this will this work. Okay. The other thing you realize with these is this stupid cam, unless you've got the right perfect can. It's darn near impossible to push this and get a teeny bit out because once you reach that barrier, it just blasts. But if you blast it into something and then don't touch it, it's got enough residue in it that you can get what you want where you want it. See a little drop coming out. say that you because I've gotten so many of them. You don't have to anymore. It's got plenty of parts. The, the spares come from experience.
the general one use one mechanism for the drive? The high density drive and this one are different. They look very similar. Parts are not exactly interchangeable. Unless it were again, you're Gilligan, you're on the island, you might be able to get off of it. But no. The slight difference is this piece alone has several extra springs to accomplish the same thing when it drops. How about the the unit disc uh, 3.5 and the Apple 3.5 drives? The inner mechanism. The, I'll, I'll point that out in a second. The, uh, They're more similar to each other, right? We find yeah. four manufacturers. No, no, no. These drives have have uh, untouched drives. Have a sticker on the side. What I refer, refer to and the Apple documentation, what if we we'll call it red label, or blue label, or black label. Red label drive is an 800K. It's the most common one. The red label drive PCB at the bottom. Opposite this 20 pin connector, there's an IC. The bottom side of the IC has what's called a large land area, solid area of, of fill it, of fill it in on board. The black label one, which is the one that's inside of the uh, unit disc, has a land area in there, and there's traces that go in and out of it. It's not solid. The sticker has got a black serial number. That is the only difference between these two 800K drives is that PCB. Okay, so the mechanics. So you can swap the PCBs all around. That's why there's two reasons, two ways I look. You can, you can tell by the red and black label quickly what drive it is. However, if somebody has swapped that PCB, I always look under here. Because I know by that which one of these it's going to be. But in terms of cleaning it, Absolutely identical. Okay. And these steps can work darn near for this this one too. This is the high density drive. These steps can work quite the same, except you can see there's a bit of difference in this one area. Yeah. To drop this down, it takes it takes two hands because you've got to move that in and that. But the frame will work. The motor will work. The two motors will work. <coughs> the head probably even works. I've never tried. The other thing you can do is, well, there's also this little piece down here at the end. Usually gets forgotten about. It doesn't move until it's pushed in. This is what takes the disc in by grabbing it here. That needs to move too. This one is, this one is sort of acceptable. So. This gets gunked up real easily. It's really tight fit. First thing I will put back is the sliding bracket. And to put those back, just put the plastic washer on your hand.
one thing you do not want to move on this drive. It is also related to the head. I told you not to split the head, mess with that. There is one screw down here. It's the last connector that's left. The little board that it goes to has a little slot. The head has a tab. It sticks up right here. The tab slides through the head. That's where it knows when it's at track zero. I like the disc too, where you can actually turn the stepper motor here, you move this. Do not move this. <laughs> Unless you want security by obscurity, and you tweak that disc a little bit, your discs will not read on any other drive. They'll read on this one, as long as you don't move it back too far, the stepper motor can still get there. But your discs will never lo no longer read anywhere else, nor will this read any other discs. Also can be put back the same after the same way as you really about the disc too. I will say this is a little more accurate piece of machinery than the disc too. Have you use a calibration disc to so set them up. They use it, but it can be done the quick and dirty way like I like I should like I said, we're just using it, using an absolute known disc and moving it ever so slightly. And then move it until it doesn't, and then move it back and split the difference. I figured there's only compression that we've got a little further here. No, it's literally removed. It's literally removed. Yep. Okay, the eject motor needs to go in, and this needs to be in the back position when you do it because the eject motor has a wheel which also has a this one doesn't it's got stuff on it so you clean it off. Some of these eject motors have the same roller bearing likes on this. Although I have never had one be an issue if it was screwed up in full eject. I'm not sure this one does. It's a slower stuff. Two disk drives probably helps take them both apart for the first step. Leave one together and do the other one. Plug the one in, test it. You don't need to put it all the way back together, just enough with the cable. See that it works, then take the other one apart. That's back on there. Yeah. 
squeezes is no higher than this drive. If I want to have a look in there, put it there, then I can look in and see that there is nothing on that head. A little small. Notice the top of this head has metal showing and it's black. Notice the top of this one has square, square silver plate. A lot of times, you'll open your disk drive for the first time, you'll find this square plate somewhere inside. The thing falls off. It falls off, it's off. It doesn't matter. If you want to put it, you want to put it back, put it back by setting it where it needs to be, and you'll see where it doesn't, where it's got some old glue in it. Take a pin head, a pin tip, a drop of crazy glue, Put it at each end, piece down, and leave it alone. If you don't want to put it back, don't put it back. It wasn't your problem when you took it apart, so it won't matter. The head, there's two cables coming out of it, they need to be not overlapping. It has kind of a pin and a plate sticking off the other side. The jack screw, which is the stepper motor, is inside here. This is going to go in like this on the, on the screw. It doesn't matter where, it'll figure, it'll, it'll sort itself out. This needs to just get set down in the gap. So put that in. forward as it can so it's touching up in here. Beveled black screws hold that down. One near the back. <coughs> One right between the ribbon cables. Just about an eighth of a turn past contact is all it needs. It just needs to be snug. I'm sure there's probably an inch torque for this. But I've never seen one. So. The little ribbon cables that popped out, again, the one that's towards the back goes in the back slot. The one that goes in the front goes towards the front. If you're not yank these cables like this, they need to come straight up. They tear real easily. Once it's torn, forget about it. Still. Next is the top part, which we drop with the, with, the, with, the, with the slider about halfway. You can see it's got a gap here with that just before it's covering the hole. Put this in. Careful with the head while you're doing this. The springs that you lifted up on the sides. Put them back down. And the black piece of plastic that we pulled off goes on one way from the back because it's got a tab on it tabs on the leading edge, you're going to put it under the head, drag it forward, locks on. Do not mess with this until you put that back on. If that's not on there and you put a disc in, goodbye to the head. It's got to be 
lifted, it won't go in now eh, without lifting. It. Now, just grab it and tuck it right in. And it's got slot in it. That's what you want. And it comes right out of there. You can turn that into an Apple II gun now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I've done that. This way. All right. So with that, this another that's the ISU one. Before I put that back together, I'll show you a little something here. This is what I told you not to do. Because now you see what's wrong with it? Didn't move, did it? <laughs> That's done. Normal. I was surprised as all heck that a guy in France did this and I talked him through it on IRC how to fix it and it worked. And I'm still shocked because I would have never expected it. But to fix that, but how? <laughs> you need to. You got to. You got to drop the carrier, drop the assembly so that that's out of the way, and put a screwdriver in far back, right below the base of the metal, the thin piece of metal. Push down on it where it would be, and. Lift up the back. It's really hard to describe. This is the only way this is ever going to go back to this. The tension on the back side of it. And now it's back. You can usually do that about twice before. Said enough of that. And it's not going to work. That's what you call selling mass and earning heads. Then you get to talk to somebody in Tokyo. <laughs> you did what? We haven't made that for 10 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Connected. Moment of truth here is <laughs> so he's thought they were gonna have inch this as well this year. I believe so. Like Mark or something. Is there any manufacturer? Oh some others. Yeah, there are certainly others. But Sony stopped making their own. For some sure there was the identity out there anyway. Push the cable in, set that down, and
just kill the drive for between the two lines. Oh wait, no, that's right. Five, four, three, two, one. We went down. Yeah. It's not enough sleep. Two came around the first time. Everybody says, Oh, here, look, but you can't copy because it's serialized to me. I looked at it and I said, That's serial number 1701. That's the Star Trek number. <laughs> yeah, right. Every single version of it was packed with that number. So. Disc is individual. Oh. There are different ones out there, but there are, I don't think that many. With that, I will take apart a five and a quarter if you want to see how to get inside of that. I'll put this stuff back together over there after. Disc 2 to show. This 2 is probably actually the easiest, but uh, everybody wants to know how to get into these to clean the head. You know, all these cleaning head, head cleaning discs, you hardly need to clean the head on three and a halfs. On these, you need to clean the head a lot. How to get in this? There's two screws in the back. Just like the 2C when I opened it, you don't have to. Driving the 2C Plus is the same as what you just saw. Okay, two screws in the back of this, and this lid comes off. And then one on top. You 
metal, metal comes off. Sometimes you have to convince it to come off. It's got grabs on the front, but it comes off. This is a unit disc. Is this a unit disc? No, nope, it's not. It says unit disc analog number two in here. Someone's been in here. Two screws near the back of the board. <coughs> pull that cable off, pull the LED off, drive head, just kind of attach to the board, get it out of the way. The data cable off, but it's also bolted down, but it can stay right there. And then it's not supposed to come out of the data. This out of the way. Cardboard. The cable's coming off anyway. Slops up with ten, it can ten to jump. And now you can get the head. These you can lift all you want. This has a spring on it. It's to go back. <laughs> and as I showed earlier on that, this way to clean that is just. <laughs> and that's that. And that is the, do that in five minutes and you'll spend less time doing that, taking it apart, plus you'll see what else is in there. That drive will work better than any stupid spinning alcohol, use it ten times, put an extra box. That's a special detergent. Yeah. <laughs> it survives anything. If you need to do the speed adjustment on this by the light, you have to take apart Four more screws, and then the two screws on each side. This comes out of the metal. You put the whole thing back together again, standing sideways on the table, and plug it in so that this is hanging far away. Or we'll put cardboard between it, whatever. Put it on a, put it on a, on a uh, preferably a 2E with a controller that'll just spin it, the two, or put a controller in a 2GS and let it spin. There's a small board and a hole down here and you can turn the pot and adjust it. Oh, copy two plus. <laughs> or copy two plus. You know what I find copy two plus when it's in when it says it's in the middle? Doesn't agree with that. So they're probably adjusting a little slow. Yeah. So do one or the other. Adjust a little slow better. Yeah. That a unit disc? That's a unit disc. Apple disc 5.25. No, this this is a 5.25 platinum drive, but the card that's inside says unit disc on it. Somebody's been in here. But they are 100% they are identical to taking apart. The only difference is this card. And is there a functional difference? Functional difference in that the unit disc does not work in as many places as the Apple disc does. Um, namely, the ROM 3 and the 2C+. Plus. Unit disc does not work on Unit disc does not work on a ROM 3. Put it on the ROM 3 and turn it on, it stays in La La Land. Unless you put a red protected disc in before you power it up. <laughs> it is, has the, everything to do with the way that the circuit, now here's the, uh, the irony of this, the disc 2 works properly on a ROM 3. <laughs> but that the controller card. The disc 2 works properly on a ROM 3 if you put the cable that Apple never sold the disc 2 with. Three. Oh. The duo disc and the unit disc, five and a quarter, do not work on ROM 3. For the same reason. It has to do with how the right protected circuit returns its status. Go through phase two on the stepper motor. 
even their own drive didn't do it that way. One. Yes. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> the true scope of it is 2C plus, ROM 3, and LC card. Do not take beige, beige plastic cards. Or platinum cards that have the card start. Yes. <laughs> um, 800K versus 1.44, and these. You can take a 1.44 drive, the blue label drive, put it inside this box, and have an external super drive. That's all you gotta do. The board in the back, same board. One exception. There's a Rev-A board. Most of them are gone from the field now. There's a Rev-A board that does not work with the high density drive. It also doesn't work with another Rev A board. <laughs> so that was a selfie, but there was a there was a service bulletin out on those, they got swapped. If you put two of these together, daisy chain, and the second one does what the first one does without a disconnect. Actually, I'll take that back and flip it around. If the first one does what the second one does without a disconnect, you've got Rev A board on the first drive. Turn around the other way, it still does what the still have the same problem, but you've got two red rate points. Turn it around the other way and it doesn't do it, leave it there. <laughs> so the red bay will work as the second it's a chain. Flaps first. You can't handle another another <coughs> dumb drive behind it. You can only handle a unit disc, three and a half or a five and a quarter. The drive that's inside this box. Came out of a Mac Plus, has a black label on it, which is the same drive as in the Unidisc. Except for an argument on CSA2, and I'll stand by my words. <laughs> don't they don't generally go back and forth. I can't take a black label and put it in place of a red label. So Apple service documentation says don't not to do it. it doesn't usually work. I also I will also stand by the fact that. When you open up a Mac SE or a Mac Plus and it's got a black label in it, it's going to have a ribbon cable that has a yellow stripe. The yellow stripe denotes it goes with a black label drive inside of a Mac. It's missing one pin, it's solid core on one pin. If you put the red label, the red wired cable on that drive, the black label drive, you turn it on, usually that cable that's mint, that pin that's missing, lights up, melts, and smokes, and stinks the house up. <laughs> Same thing happens with plugging a three and a half inch drive on a 19 inch pin, 19 inch, 19 pin controller card, a five and a quarter on a 2E. One of those wires about the middle of the ribbon cable lights up and burns. Same problem. They're, they're darn near electrically compatible except for that. So. Couldn't tell Another little piece of trivia here while I'm in here. The back of this drive look at my site and not the disk drives. I actually meant to bring one this time when I get it. Back of this board on the earlier ones is two DB25 cutouts <coughs> instead of these square hole. Like the prototype 3 plus that we saw with its 25 pin connector and the drive that had the 25 pin cable plus connector. The duo disc you notice has a 25 pin connector in the back. <clears throat> but we do know that all the daisy chaining can, can happen on 19 pins. It doesn't need that extra. There was a, an intention that didn't go far. In the two and three days, and Lisa, to use the same cabling across all the family of computers. And the drive compatibility would be solely based on the cable from the host end to the first disk drive. So that the duo disk and the duo disk five and a quarter were always going to be the last, so it only had the one connector. These would have what we call unidisc, duo disk. This had two holes in the back, and you 
plug to the controller to the, to the next drive. So you daisy chain all of it that way. The FileWare Twiggy drive would have had the same two holes. The disk three, same thing. So at some point, all of the drives would work across all of the computers in the, whatever fashion they were meant to be. There's a mock-up picture of a FileWare drive external, which is the Twiggy drive for the 2E. I don't think it ever got past that. It would have worked electrically and been 400, uh, 680K. And DOS 3.3 stores a maximum of 400K per disk per site without any modification whatsoever to the DOS. Three and a half inch single sided drive, it's 400K. Let's see where I'm going with that. If you have an electrically compatible controller, which there were a slight few of them, you could use a 400K drive with DOS 3.3. You emit hello, you have a 400K. Unmodified DOS, 100% unmodified copy two plus, copy two plus that uses track and sector, not not uh, uh, hardwired, yeah. which I have one version that does. Fit any other copy program that uses track and sector lookup, 100% unmodified, and copy A. Copy A will copy a 400K disk to a 400K disk. Also realize this is more than a 35 track disk. It was more capable than, than, than they let it into be, but they didn't want to do that. They wanted to go to Chronos because of the darn Apple III. <laughs> they had to recycle everything they invested in. Now. So. Hopefully, you got error on file structure. So. Yeah, see. There's 400k drive. You're starting to need it. You're yes. starting to need it. And the Macintosh didn't have it with the 400 page drive either. Right. If you wanted a new folder, no, you had to copy the blank folder that was included on every disk. <laughs> <laughs> and the folders came later because they were really fake. Uh -huh. There's still a flat directory on the disk. Yeah, so so every disk had a disk called empty folder. folder. Yeah. So if you deleted that empty folder, then you could. You couldn't delete it. Oh. They saved you. <laughs> and you couldn't rename it if it was the only one. Oh. <laughs> they went, all that hassle, they went in to do that, they could have just made it work. Yeah. Yeah, that's the Saturday solution. Yeah. We ship Monday. Yeah. How do yeah. we make directories work? Well, <laughs> here's one. Here's one. You copy it. <laughs> this disk is empty. Oh, it's got a directory in it. Yep. So, with that, any other questions on the uh, drives? I think I kind of covered a little bit more than that. Where do we find compatibility of drives with different models of Apple? Is there a website? Let's see if they keep that. Blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he's got that one. No, it's the real CSA. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, not mine. The real one. Yeah, maybe that works. <laughs> From Apple2.info. Web reference. Since there is a new people. List of what drives work the well. Who is what? Wiki, index. You know, just just this. That's all you have. You can find the rest of it. Oh, okay. Right there. Thank you. Somebody says, "Oh, how come all these disks are always giving me I/O errors?" Stop using the three and a half inch disc with the extra hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, 
there were also the pictures there too. Is, 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 is the media on those discs is, is even if they think the format okay is not seen is the key word. Yeah, I mean, an emergency that you can use it to go from here to that computer in about 30 seconds, and that's probably about it. It's not used, it doesn't usually last. It's hard for 96 DPI versus 40. So you haven't really magnetized it. You've only put a little bit of room in that position. Well, I guess that's going to be a bumper for everybody who got the three and a half inch version today. <laughs> put them on HP. If, oh, did you send out three, hand out three and a halfs? The other thing with those. Is if they actually have a super drive or a Mac LC card or something, it's gonna it's gonna curl when you put them in. Unless you take the cover up the hole, which I did. Okay, but if you put them in this drive, the hole means nothing. No, that I know. Yeah. Right. But you're but actually I there might be somebody who has a super drive or something with a Mac LC card. Right? Yeah. But you're saying that those discs are not really. They're not reliable. They need to copy it. Turns out the NRK drives don't have enough light. I think there's probably still a bus full of them, right? So there are see the uh, illustrations so you can look at your the five, the drive five. and see what see what it is on, on the website. The disc two is right here. It has four screws on the bottom. The top slides off. This is what you'll see. It's got a screw here, another one over here. You pull that cable off, that cable off, and that one off, and that board comes out, the same thing you do. Wipe the head off. And the chip nearest the radio cable will be the one that's blown because that's why you're in here. Because you missed it by two pins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it'll be melted to the top of the case. Yeah. If you turn on your disc two, in the very second, the very you turn on your two E, and the next thing you hear is it actually pops the top of the chip right off and smacks into the top of the case. What? Lose the crater. Yeah, many of us in this room have done this. Yeah, it smells good. Yes. Like rocket. Oh, it's like you just be glad you didn't have the cover off when you were not leaning over it at the time. Oh. <laughs> and there is the head in the three and a half inch. This is the top head. See this thin piece of metal here? That is the one that you bend when you lift up. It's got to be awesome. So what I'm doing is stuffing a screwdriver under here, <clears throat> pushing down from the top of this, stuffing a screwdriver under here, which is causing it to reverse flex here to put the tension back. Just push. And thanks for this reference. Hmm? Thanks for this reference. Yeah. All kinds of you got to get tired of getting the call. Oh, the other way to fix it. Other stuff on here. Mm -hmm. or, or when someone comes in the chat, like, help, I just bet. Bet. I didn't even look at it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ram cards. SCSI cards. so many times and I won't have to change it. <laughs> I, <don't, laughs> and, I haven't learned. <laughs> uh, I, I must admit I have seen inbuilt in places not influenced by you. And your jaw just hits the ground when it happens. Yes. So. <laughs> you know, I can feel I want. <laughs> you know, I can feel I want. 
No, it doesn't right say now, inbuilt in Ethernet on a map. There's no schematics yet, but we're trying to find it. But, uh, uh, every bit of information is for my team. Glad you have a front facing camera on you. This isn't the Jetson. I'm not answering the video. Okay, anyway. So, that's it. Thanks, Donnie. Show us your project on projectors or two C's or two E's or whatever you have. Michael, what, what does your announcement require? No. Do you want to go first? Okay. Uh, this is kind of, kind of a funny announcement. It's not mine. Uh, Ferdinand couldn't be here this year, uh, but he put together a, 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 a disk server for Nodanet, which uh, if you've got two machines or more connected by Nodanet, then you can set one of them up except mobile as a disk server, and the other machines can see its disk drives as if they were local to them. Um, he actually put together a, a set of two demo disks, and uh, he told me I could share those images with you if anybody's interested in those. Um, he also has a, uh, a demo video. Let's see, is Henry here? Yeah, I heard. Oh. Never. Oh, <laughs> I didn't. I don't have. Didn't say the URL for uh, for Ferdinand's video. It's actually on my Facebook. It's on YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you probably could look up under uh, Ferdinand Meyer Herman as well. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he demos the disk server and also a two C VGA adapter. Yeah, the YouTube page is youtube.com slash F-E-R-D-I-M-H. Yeah, that's 
I would like there to be more James, you do? Yeah. Is it yeah. just a verbal announcement or a demonstration? The parts of the GS laptop did not come in from Japan. I do not have it. It will not be shown at K-Fest. I got posted on the list. I've done the same 